You're listening to the NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network, part of Sports Illustrated, giving you daily NFL Draft, Dynasty, and Debbie Fantasy Football Podcasts. Class is in session. Welcome into the draft seminar presented by Sports Illustrated's NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. I'm your host, Matt Hicks, the FF Educator, joined as always by my co-host, John Lobb, the Gridiron Scholar. And this is one of my personal favorite players to break down in this year's class. He's my fantasy football sleeper that I still think nobody's talking about. It's Demetric Felton out of UCLA. John, are you fired up to break him down as well? I am, my friend. It seems just like yesterday we were breaking him down for the Senior Bowl, and then he went out and he had a terrific Senior Bowl week and game, which put him on the national radar. But he hasn't ascended since then, so I tend to agree with you. In high school, he was a four-star recruit by ESPN and the number 35 prospect in California. As a senior, Matt, He rushed for 1,347 yards and four touchdowns, and he caught 23 passes for 391 yards and two touchdowns. So his dual threat ability was there as early as high school. We're going to fast forward in 2019. He's playing with Joshua Kelly, who was last year a member of the San Diego Chargers. But Demetric Felton got a lot of opportunities, but they were not necessarily – In the backfield, he established a school record with 55 catches for a running backs and a program mark with four touchdowns over 75 yards. Just an incredible home run hitter. He had a 100-yard kickoff return at Washington State. He totaled 15 plays in which he gained over 20 yards for the Bruins. And he had multiple receptions in all 12 games. Last year, he was a red shirt senior and Joshua Kelly was no longer on the roster. He was Chip Kelly's main back in the backfield. He led the Pac-12 and he was sixth in the nation in all purpose yards with 166 per game. Very dynamic player, all purpose yards for the Bruins. He led the team in rushing with 668, and he was fourth in the Pac-12. He had a much more normal backfield role, but he still caught a lot of passes. He had 22 receptions for 159 yards and three touchdowns. For his efforts, he was named second team all Pac-12. He's a dynamic, interesting weapon offensively in the right scheme. Matt, what does your film breakdown say of Demetric Felton? Well, John, starting off here with Demetric Felton, I want to point out that I currently have him in my model as an athlete. Now, that's not a traditional thing a lot of folks do, but I don't know if he's playing as a running back or a wide receiver at the next level. You mentioned it. He played both positions at UCLA. He went to the Senior Bowl and primarily lined up at wide receiver and did very well, but this is an Antonio Gibson situation. We're not going to know what he is until it's draft night and that team calls his name because he's a wide, he's going to be a wide receiver on you know a third of the NFL boards right now. He's going to be a running back on a third of the boards and he's not going to be on a third of boards because not every player is on every board for each NFL team. So with that in mind, I love his hands. I think he can succeed as either a pure wide receiver in the NFL or maybe for fantasy football, a running back that catches the ball, right? That's even more exciting for us. He has consistent hands, barely any drops on his tape. He does really well to catch off-target passes. He's not the biggest guy, but he has a pretty good catch uh, radius for his size. And those hands looked really good on 2020 tape especially. So I've seen some improvement in his hand work over time. Now, he's not the fastest guy, but he does have some explosion off the line of scrimmage. I actually like him better running downhill. He speeds up as he moves downfield. And I think he's quicker than he necessarily is fast. He's fluid. He's twitching. He does have good lateral movements. 
Now, he displayed good yards after the catch ability. At times, he tried to do too much, but other times he maneuvers around the field really, really well, and he's very comfortable running in the ball with the ball in his hands after the catch as a wide receiver because, as I've just explained, he's also played running back, so he's not going to fumble the ball. He understands how to move around the field. And also, and here's a big plus from the NFL side of things, I like his blocking ability. He does really well in pass pro. I think it's one of the reasons NFL teams might use him at running back. So I, I saw him able to pick up blitzes really well, read assignments really well. And he's not a, he's, a, and as a wide receiver, so switching gears a little bit, as a wide receiver, he is an aggressive blocker downfield. He's not afraid to take on the linebacker. He's not afraid to take on some bigger defenders. And you know, moving back to the running back side, he drops a really nice lead block. So UCLA used him in a whole variety of ways. I'm not sure how the NFL is going to use him, John, but I think it's going to work out for fantasy football. Give him an 85 in hands, an 80 in speed, an 80 in yards after catchability, and an 80 in blocking. I have this projection as a flex filler. That's your running back, you know, 30 to 40, your wide receiver 30 to 40. I think he's going to be relevant, John. Let's go ahead and flip on the tape here, and let's kind of put uh, into action some of these words. Absolutely, and there's some magic in these plays. Absolutely, absolutely, and provided, as always, by Brandon Lejeune, Debbie Deep Dive on YouTube and Twitter. And we're going to see here against Cal, we're going to see his receiving ability go out in the backfield, and there's a little shake, John. There's the yards after catch ability as well on display. On this next play, he's going to take the handoff against Cal in a sick jump cut right there. So he's not the most elusive guy, but he understands how to maneuver around the field. And you do see these plays where he spins, lateral quickness, jump cuts, and he's very good on the perimeter and in the open field. And Chip Kelly used them very well. I hope that he gets with a creative offensive coordinator – as you mentioned, and use him as a weapon. And you can see here, John, against Arizona, he gets around the edge, so he's able to beat defenders to the edge. On this next play, he takes the ball straight up the middle, pops the linebacker in the mouth, and look at this downhill running ability against Arizona. We saw it earlier against Oregon. He's not going to fly off the line of scrimmage, but he builds momentum really well downfield. So versatility and Demetric Felton, they go hand in hand when we're talking about this, and that works for the NFL. The more you can do the more opportunity you're going to get. How does his production metrics, John, albeit pretty unique, how do they fit into your model? It's interesting because you do have to put him in the prism of a wide receiver slash running back to really understand how the model looks at him. Because if I think if you measured him as just a running back or just a receiver, he's going to fall short because you look at the career rushing yards. 1,101. That's not going to pop off the screen. You're not going to scream, wow, look at that. 4.7 yards per carry is not outstanding either. But then you say 99 receptions, 15 touchdowns, and when he finally got his opportunity this year, look at that, Matt. 827 yards from scrimmage and scrimmage yards dominator of 26% this year. What I like about him, he's 5'10", 200 pounds. He's kind of bigger than you think he is. To me, he did benefit from a Chip Kelly scheme. If you watch a lot of Chip Kelly like I've done over the years, all the way back from Oregon, then you saw him at Philadelphia, he does a very good job of getting his backs in space on the perimeter. And Demetric Felton excelled there. If you're going to plan on using him, between the tackles and grinding, you, you're drafting the wrong player. He's a perfect complementary piece. I don't think his ceiling is as good or high as Antonio Gibson as a runner, but he might actually be a better pass catcher, and he might you know, end up with 120 to 150 touches every year for the right team. In my opinion, I like the flex filler. That's a great value. Draft capital is going to determine his fantasy value. Is he a third-round pick or a day three pick? If he's a third-round pick, there's a very good chance that he gets a better 
chance at opportunity. I will not be surprised, though, Matt, if one team likes him and grabs him in the second round. It could happen. The right coach watching the right film kind of deciding I can use this young player in my offense on the perimeter. But I expect the third round draft capital, which will make us all interested in Demetric Felton. All right, there you have it. Demetric Felton, the dynamic athlete out of UCLA. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Draft Seminar presented by Sports Illustrated's NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to give it a like if you're watching the video. Subscribe on whatever audio platform you may be listening on. And as 